David Waterworth for Clean Tech here has just reported that Australia is getting into LFP batteries in a big way. And this is actually a really, really good thing for US electric car manufacturers, in particular Tesla, because Tesla use LFP batteries in its cars. Why does this make so much sense for both Australia, America, and Tesla? Well, here's what David had to say. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. I'm Sam Evans. I'm the Electric Viking. Thank you for tuning in. Electric vehicles, of course, are, well, right now, more expensive to manufacture than internal combustion engine vehicles in most places. Even in China, slightly more expensive. And the thing is, most of the world's batteries are made in China. That includes the cathodes. EVs need cathodes. EVs need batteries. However, the cost of batteries is coming down. But exporting batteries from China to the US, which was what Tesla do now, is not really going to work that well in the future. The reason being the IRS or the government incentives for battery packs will actually mean that unless the batteries or the cathodes themselves are made in free trade partner countries or in the US, then they won't qualify for massive incentives. That matters. That's very, very important for EV manufacturers. The other thing worth considering here is LFP batteries or LMFP batteries, which are the batteries that Tesla will use soon, are the most important battery technology we've seen in decades. The energy density is nearly that of NMC battery chemistries, such as the what's in a 4680 cell, but it's much cheaper to manufacture and it has a longer life cycle. Australia is one of the biggest miners in the world of lithium. However, we don't refine anything here. We don't make parts of the batteries here. That's about to change. Australian mining is going to move up the value chain and maybe this is part of, you know, Robin Denholm's push, the chairman of Tesla. She has been pushing Australia. She is an Australian citizen and has formerly been the CEO of, of Telstra. Been pushing Australia saying, guys, you're just exporting all these raw materials to China and they're getting the value out of producing the batteries and the parts that go to the batteries. Why don't you do it here in Australia? Well, Australia said, yes, you're right. The needs for possibly a very large amount of Tesla's LMFP or, or LFP battery production in the future could possibly come from Australia by Avenira's LFP cathode manufacturing plant in Darwin. That's in Australia's Northern Territory. That's where there's more crocodiles per capita than anywhere else in the world. There's snakes everywhere. A bit of a crazy place, actually. The cathode manufacturing plant will be linked to Avenira's Wanara Phosphate Project, which is 1,000 kilometers away. Considering the vast distances in that area, 600 miles is really nothing. There's not many places in the world where phosphate is mined. There's huge demand for phosphate because of the increasing production of LFP batteries. So mining phosphate will be very valuable. The nearest settlement is a village 190 kilometers, around 120 miles away, has a population of 240 people. That suburb is actually powered by solar and wind. And of course, batteries. The phosphate mine will be used to manufacture lithium ferrophosphate LFP batteries, LFP cathodes, and fertilizer. Now, I believe that it's very likely they'll add manganese to the mix and make LMFP cathodes, considering they are essentially the future of lithium ion phosphate batteries. It's expected that within two years, says Clean Technica, that Avenira could be one of only three LFP cathode manufacturers outside of China. This would give global EV manufacturers more supply and more choice of supplier battery grade material. And it would mean that companies like Tesla, who rely on lithium ion phosphate batteries or LMFP batteries, M3P batteries, would be able to get their cathodes from a free trade partner and therefore still qualify for battery incentives in the United States. Avenira hopes to commence construction on the LFP plant next year with cathode production to commence in 2025. Now, there are actually many many manufacturers in the world who plan on moving to using LFP batteries for their more affordable cars and possibly also for their mid mainstream cars as well. Those include Volkswagen, Ford, Stellantis, Mercedes, BMW, and of course, many Chinese manufacturers who already use them. 
Currently, around 50% of the world's battery manufacturing are actually already lithium-ion phosphate batteries, and Tesla's standard range vehicles come with them, as do all of BYD's fully electric cars. One of the advantages of LFP batteries is that they last longer around, they usually have around 30 to 40% more charges, and they're less prone to fires. Plus, they don't need nickel or cobalt. The Northern Territory government says this project has the potential to create 1,000 jobs in mining and manufacturing in the area, and approximately $4 billion in yearly revenue should flow into the Australian economy as a result of this massive project. Some EV manufacturers are phasing out the use of NCM batteries. They're more expensive. They have more faults. They have more issues. Look at the faults of LG Chem batteries, LG Energy Solutions. We seem to hear about them every second day. And they don't produce LFP batteries, but they plan to in the future. In fact, they're working on them right now. The other thing worth keeping in mind is you can actually recycle LFP batteries. And many companies around the world now are doing exactly that. Now, being cheaper is a huge part of the reason why they have grown so, so quickly. Plus, the reliability and the ability to charge your battery from 0% to 100% and not have any battery degradation. Now, Tesla, when you get one of their standard range cars, they tell you, you can charge it to 100%, no problems. Don't worry about doing it. In fact, they even encourage you to do it at least once per week. However, alternative battery chemistries, NCM batteries in particular, which are the most common alternative to LFP batteries, shouldn't really be charged above 80% in order to avoid battery degradation. That's one of the big advantages of LFP batteries. Avenira, the company that will make these cells or these cathodes, plans to ship the phosphate by electric train. With each train that we're carrying, Avenira will make the cathodes and they plan to ship the phosphate by train. Each train will carry 10,000 tons and they'll have three trains, they say. Avenir CEO is looking for efficiency in construction and commissioning of the trains. Efficiencies can be achieved by onshoring mining and downstreaming processing practices. This equates to fewer transport and logistical costs, making its integrated LFP supply chain more economical. Avenir has partnered already with Taiwanese battery material pioneer Elise. The Dalman LFP plant replicates Ali's operating LFP battery cathode material plant in Taiwan. This partnership reduces the risk to Avenira. And they said this, this MOU opens the door for Avenira to learn from Ali's about LFP battery cathode manufacturing technology. They're basically licensing this technology from this battery company. We can leverage this experience to optimize the production of phosphoric acid from the Wanara project and develop downstream assets to produce Australia's first LFP precursor cathode material. While DSO production is taking place at Wanara and Avenira is generating cash flow, the company will work alongside Ali's to advance the LFP plant in Darwin, having achieved DSO production from Wanara and first LFP cathode production from its Darwin plant. Avenira will then aim to produce a thermal phosphoric acid product from an additional processing facility at Wanara. This Product will then be used as feedstock for the Darwin lithium iron phosphate plant. Prior to the thermal phosphoric acid plant coming online, Avenira would source thermal phosphoric acid from Elise's existing supply chain to feed this facility. So why has Australia partnered with a Taiwanese battery manufacturing company? Well, it's one of the few places in the world capable of, of actually manufacturing LFP cathode material and having the technology and patents to do so, plus the understanding. Ali's Taiwan owns more than 120 exclusive patents worldwide. Prior to 2015, Ali's were the largest LFP cathode material manufacturer globally. China has moved ahead, but Ali's is looking to gain a bit of territory here, gain a bit of ground on China by partnering with the Australian government to produce these cathodes in Australia. Here's what they said. The key thing for us as a company is to make a value added product. This starts off with direct shipping ore before moving on to LFP cathode manufacturing. Then we build out our phosphoric acid process as well. So we're focused on integrating downstream manufacturing and dealing in materials that are going to be in continuous and growing demand in ex China supply chains. Now, I think when you think about the global tensions between China and the US, 
that's not going to end anytime soon. So Australia and Taiwan basically getting together here to manufacture the most important cathode for the world's most likely battery chemistry to go into EVs, the most common batteries to go into EVs over the next decade, probably the next 20 years, in fact, is a really smart strategic move. And it really does mean that the US may not necessarily have to be dependent on China for its cathodes in the future. I think that's a good thing. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching.